Greetings. Welcome to In Conversation with Trevor, brought to you by Heart and Soul Broadcasting Services. I go beyond the headlines and beyond the sensational. Today I'm in conversation with Clive Monomukundu, music producer and lead guitarist. If you enjoy this conversation, remember to subscribe, to like, and to share. Let's get down to some work. Kundu, welcome to In Conversation with Trevor. Oh, thank you, Mkoma Trevor. What, what a beautiful song that you start, you 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 play you played there. What is that song, and why is it so special to you? Um, it's one of my favorite Oliver Mtukuzi song that I participated in. But uh, there's a story behind. We used to hate the song as a band. Right. For some funny reason, we never liked the song. So Dara is the one who used to start the song, Negitara, and every time he started the song, we started looking at each other, rolling our eyes with that song, Jaja foot. <laughs> but uh, funny enough, uh, 2005, we recorded it and we went on an American tour. And when we came back from the tour, it was out and it was a major hit. When we first played it in, uh, uh, at the Welcome Show uh, at the HICC, mm. Um, HSCC, I don't get shadow, and everybody was screaming, and we were wondering. So, this song is now a hit, so that's when I started liking this song. So, <laughs> <laughs> it's now one of my favorites. It, tell me, it, interesting that Oliver Mtukuza, the late, may his soul rest in peace. He liked the song, but you guys didn't like the song. Do, do, you, do you remember why, in particular, I didn't like this beautiful song? Ah, I don't really know because it was very unanimous. Everybody in the band uh, didn't like it. Didn't like it except for for the man himself. So I don't know whether it was the intro. I don't even know. But I think the fact that we did not like it is also the reason why we put more effort in improving it. I see. Yeah, because boredom is part of the creative process as well. Boredom is part of the creative process. Yeah, because when to you me about that, That's when you try when you try to eliminate the boredom. You beautify the piece. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. What, what is it like working with Oliver Mtukuzi? Um, it was like uh, playing for the national team. Was, uh, Oliver Mtukuzi is the biggest export ever in Zimbabwe. So everywhere we went, we knew that we were representing Zimbabwe. And uh, it also taught me self-confidence and to be proud of who I am. Of course, before that, I had um, made up my mind that I wanted to identify with Zimbabwe a lot. But um, working with Oliver Mtukuzi, it reinforced that, um, that idea because Oliver Mtukuzi was very proud of himself, very sure of himself, very confident. Yeah. But humble. I mean, everywhere where I met him, um, very humble. He would, uh, uh, you know, uh, honor you and, and pay attention to you. I found him very humble. Yeah, he was very humble. Even the way he related to us, the band, he was not one of those bosses who wanted to be feared. Because, you know, in the music industry, we use inspiration, unlike in the military, we use fear. So with fear, there's no inspiration. So I'm sure he understood that. So for the simple reason that we had chemistry off stage, it was easy for us uh -huh. to have chemistry on stage. 
And uh, how long did you play with uh, with Oliver? Um, I joined him, I think it was uh, on the 4th of February 2003, and I was fired February 2007. <laughs> <laughs> you, it's amazing. You're, you're one of those few people who are at liberty to talk about th that they were fired. I mean, mm. people know that I was I was fired <laughs> in the Financial Gazette as editor. Yeah. Um, but a lot of people are embarrassed by being fired. Yeah, everybody wants to nice up the story. Yeah. I know I just left, but uh, <laughs> I know I was fired. <laughs> <laughs> Why were you fired? Why were you fired? Uh, yeah, there were so many theories. Because what happened is um, Tuko was not very good at... Um, speaking out his mind at times, especially face to face. So he never said anything. He just looked for another band and they started practicing with another band. And uh, the first time we heard about it is when um, people started calling us, when it was out in the newspaper. But, ah, we heard you are fired. We're fired, how did you know when I don't know? And then they told me it's in the paper. Then we checked the paper and we discovered that we were fired. It was seven of us. Wow. <laughs> But I never explained anything. So we ended up hearing so many theories. And I even watched one of your interviews with Dr. With Professor Fred Zindi. Yeah. He had his own theory. <laughs> I don't know whether that one is the correct one or not. <laughs> so it, it, what, did it, what did it feel like being fired? Of course, it is. Because I really enjoyed working with him. But I was very close to Mr. Lemu Itsikirai. Um, oh, the late. Yeah, the late. He, the moment he heard that we were fired, he called me and told me, you know what, you need to thank God for the time you worked with the, with the men and the opportunities that you had through working with him and move on. Mm. That's what he told me. And so, you did that? And I did just that. You were not angry? You didn't want no, to revenge? No, I just took it as a business decision. But uh, some journalists were angry with me because um, I remember when we were fired, a number of journalists came to my studio wanting to hear a very juicy story. Yeah. <laughs> But I always told them, you know what, it was a business decision and um, I have no problems with that. And um, I had saved my money, I had bought my studio, so I took um, advantage of the time that I worked with him. So I've got no bitterness. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And then you worked 2007, 2008, you worked with Chiwoniso Maraire. You toured Europe uh, with her. How was that? Yeah, it was another interesting phase again. Um, at first, she was hesitant to call me because uh, I remember Josh Mick was the music director. So he told me that Chioniso was asking him if uh, Mon would be interested in working uh, with her on tour. And uh, he told him, ah, why not? After all, I'm jobless. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm unemployed. I'm unemployed, so why not? So we went on tour for two years. Uh, we toured Europe. And I was surprised that Chioniso was bigger in Europe than here in Zimbabwe. Hmm. Because she would fill up stadiums, and um, I mean auditoriums. But here in Zimbabwe, she would just play at the book cafe. So I was really amazed because uh, her music was very Zimbabwean. That's when I, I, uh, I noticed that... Um, for you to be international, to be noticed internationally, you need to sound like where you come from. Because uh, that's one element that will really catapult you into the international scene. Because Chioniso and Oliver Mtukuz, they sounded very Zimbabwean. So because of that, they were very easy to market internationally. There's a lesson there. So what you're essentially saying, uh, Mono, is be authentic. You, you can't go to Jamaica and try and, and produce uh, reggae, which is what they produce uh, uh, all, all the time. Take what you are to the foreign market. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, what I'm saying is, yeah, that, that's exactly what I'm saying. Um, people don't know that Zimbabwe is part of the international community. So whatever we do is also international as long as we do it to our level best. Wow. So the international community community is mainly looking at two things, authenticity and originality. Mm. Originality sounding like yourself and authenticity sounding like where you come from. Mm. So even if you do reggae, you need to do it like what like Dube did. You put some South African elements to his reggae. So it was totally different from how Bob Mali sounded. Now that's totally so, different. So you, 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 uh, you shouldn't want to sound like, for lack of another name, Michael Jackson, exactly. um, be yourself. Yeah, because what if you are you offering to the world, essentially? Exactly. Because if you copy somebody, you become a cheaper version of that person. Yeah. 
Um, and it's good for a karaoke show. It is good for a high school show. <laughs> but for the proper music industry, it doesn't work. Because if you look in Zimbabwe, we've got so many artists that try to copy Simon Chimbetu, like when I am below Six Kings and so forth. They, we've got so many artists that try to copy Alec Macheso and uh, so many artists that try to copy uh, Charles Sharamba. But if you look at it, none of them uh, made it uh, big. Because they, they were just cheaper versions of those people. Of the original original copy. Yeah. How was it like working with uh, Chuaniso? Chuaniso was, um, I think, all of them took was my best boss ever. And uh, Chuaniso was my second best boss ever. Because both of them were very good uh, at working with their, with their subordinates. And especially when it comes to money. Because there's no way you can be paid the same amount of money with the boss. <laughs> But uh, there is need for um, rational unfairness. Mm. The unfairness has to be reasonable. Yeah. So that's why Tuku and Choniso were very good. And um, Choniso, usually, if you agreed on a certain fee, usually after the show, she, she would pay you more. Wow. Yeah. She's the only person that I saw. Either. So every time you went to work, why not we need motivation? So. But um, I think the best motivation is to pay people well and to treat people well. Mm. Yeah. The, the one thing that I've found absolutely uh, fascinating with you, Mono, is, is that you started at an early age. You started at nine years old, when you're nine years old, if I remember. And you are self-taught. So my question is, where did the, the, the passion come from? Where did this desire that I want to do this come from? Had you seen somebody do it or where did it come from? Um, I just noticed at a very early age, around even age five, that every time I saw somebody holding an instrument, especially the guitar, my heart would beat very fast. I would get very excited. So I think it's something that was just inborn, that just got, got, got planted it inside me. So um, as I grew up, I well, I had just made up my mind with I want to be a musician as early as nine years. That's religion. a blessing, you know. You know why I say that? Because a lot of us get to 30, 40, not knowing what it is that we want to do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but you knew true. what you wanted to do at five. And the confirmation that this is what God wanted you to do is that you're still doing it now and enjoying it. Yeah, I'm still doing it. Although I done my research and found that in Zimbabwe it's a very low income industry. But I just said, you know what, I'll just do it. I knew just that the possibility of making it was very slim. But what kept me going was not the guarantee, but the possibility mm. and the love. The possibility. Yeah. Has that possibility come out? Has it, has, it, has it materialized? Yeah, I can say I'm successful, but I think success is in two parts. There's the financial side and the substance side. Mm. So in terms of substance and in terms of contributing to society, to Zimbabwe music-wise, I think I've contributed a lot. So I think I'm successful because I'm featured on more than a thousand albums. Wow. I've uh, worked with the biggest artists. I've contributed to the success of a lot of artists. So that side, mm. I'm very successful. Mm. Just like Albert Einstein, he was mm. very successful, but he was not rich. <laughs> so financially, I'm not rich, but I'm comfortable. That's good. So that's, um, to me, that's a success. The other thing that we must talk about is the fact that your father didn't support what you're doing. <laughs> your father actually fought what we're trying to do. Shall we, shall we go there? Shall we share, share with yeah. us what, that experience? Yeah, my father was so much against me going into the music industry. He never liked it. So every time he saw me playing in any type of instrument, he gave me corporal punishment. <laughs> but I made up my mind that I didn't want to leave his dream. I wanted to live my own dream. So, so I politely refused to, to follow his lead. But I did it politely. <laughs> and for how long did that 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 polite uh, uh, disobedience go on? He only changed his mind when he called me on Friday, the twelfth of October, two thousand and one. That's when he called me and said, uh, "You now have my blessings. I think you have proved that you can be a musician and lead a normal life with one wife and uh, without children all around." <laughs> So as soon as he blessed me, doors started opening mm -hmm. because I believe in parental blessings. And um, that's when I started 
getting better jobs. That's when later on I was called by the likes of all of them to go Z and so forth. So I think his blessings uh, really opened doors for me. What did that blessing mean? What did that telephone call do to you when you received it and they said, finally, you've got my blessing? Uh, I don't remember a day that I was so happy more than that day because it was like I've won a Grammy or I've uh, won a lotto because it's something that I've always wanted. You know, growing up, I always imagined my father seated in the crowd every time I went to play at shows. I knew he never liked it, but still I would imagine him sitting in the crowd watching me play. You know how it is good even in Uruma, Anakano, Yeah. You want your parents seated in the audience. That's so what I want. out for. Tamba, yeah. doing what you enjoy. Yeah, so I never got it paced up. But, um, so the first time you saw me actually playing was at my wedding. Wow. 1998. That's uh, my official wedding. That's when he first saw me play. Before that, he'd never seen me play because he never wanted to, to, to even watch me play. So what, what was his reason for that very strong opposition? Um, yeah, I think his reason was coming from a good place. Okay. Because before, uh, if, you look at, if you look back into history, there are a lot of um, musicians who tarnish the image of the music industry. Mm -hmm. because what happens with the music industry is that there's a lot of temptations. There are women that uh, they call groupies that just throw themselves at musicians. And um, not for money, they're not prostitutes. Some of them are gainfully employed but they just throw themselves at musicians. It happens worldwide. And usually musicians lose focus because of that. Mm. So they end up just sleeping around. That's why um, even 99% of the friends that I started with, they all passed away in the oh. 90s because of HIV AIDS. But it doesn't mean that I was clean. <laughs> yeah. I also, I also did it, got infected with uh, my STIs, but uh, I made up my mind with, oh, you know what? No right, let me stop. That's how I survived. Mm. But um, coming back to your question, my father um, hated uh, the idea of me getting into the music industry because of what he saw other musicians do. Wow. Mm. We'll take a break here. When we come back, um, we're going to go to uh, uh, Monos Jenny starting his first band and the drama that is associated with that. So please don't go away. Join us on the other side. When I was in my 20s, I was 100% sure that I would never reach 40. conversation with Mono Mukundu, music producer and lead guitarist. Um, Mono, you were born September 1970, so this is your your birthday month. September yeah. is your birthday month. Yeah. On where the were you born and where did you grow up? I was born on a Tuesday, the 15th of September 1970 at Rusape General Hospital. Mm -hmm. But I grew up in Harare between Fakose, Campus and Kwaz, and I was just a uh, Changing those um, identities. And, and any memories about the, the way you were brought up uh, that have stuck with you right now, apart from your fight with your father? Over <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I just uh, had fun growing up. Mm. And uh, I just remember that when I was around, um, before my teens, 
I think around age 10, 11, I discovered that um, what we saw on TV were actors being paid. So I lost interest in movies. So I stopped <laughs> enjoying That's movies. That's fascinating. <laughs> So up to now, I don't enjoy movies. I don't enjoy sport. So that's one funny thing about the way I grew up. Wow. Yeah. What a discovery. So you discovered, no, they, they are paid to do this. I'm not interested. Yeah, because when I was young, I used to think that it's totally, real. it's really happening. Everything is real. <laughs> then I later learned that uh, those people are just getting paid. And, uh, so but the I artists lost. like you, Mono? Yeah, but uh, with music, you know, it's real. Yeah. But um, with acting, so a lot of interest. Even up to now, I don't enjoy movies. Which schools did you go to? I went to a total of eight schools. Wow. <laughs> grade 1 St. Columbus in Rusape. Grade 2 to grade 6 first term at Kurai Primary School in Kambuzuma. Grade 6 second term uh, Mutare Junior School. Mutare. Grade 6 third term. Victoria Junior School in Mashingo. Grade 7 for a few weeks at Marinda Primary School in Mashingo. Then uh, Form 1 at uh, Kambuzuma High School. Form 2 at um, Mukombami Secondary School in Murewa. Then Form 3 and 4 in, at Mfakos and number 3 High School. Wow. So it's a total of 8 schools. A any teacher that stands out um, when you look back? <laughs> Yeah, or was Chikoro a, was not very important to you? Uh, there was one teacher, we never got along. I still remember him very well. I Mr. Guna from Fakosa I3. Hmm. I think he was, a, I can call him a bully. I don't know if he's watching, I'm sorry, but he was a bully. <laughs> yeah, he would just beat us up for, wow. for no apparent reason. And, um, and uh, that's one thing that I did not like about my group B schools mm. was I went for two terms only uh, my group A schools and I noticed that the treatment was totally different. Mm. With group A schools, it was fun to go to school. You couldn't wait to go to school. But with group B schools, there, was, there were a lot of beatings mm. and some of them did not make sense to me. If your fees was not paid up on time, you could be beaten. If you had no school uniform, you could be beaten. End result, most people from group schools, they lack um, self-confidence. Because there were also a lot of labels. Mm. Mm. Just because you couldn't um, get your mates right. And you end up thinking you are dumb on anything that Absolutely. you do. Absolutely. Yeah, so that's uh, one beef I had with Mr. Guna. <laughs> so we always fought. Because so I would refuse to be beaten up for no reason. <laughs> I wanted the reason why I was be I was being beaten. <laughs> yeah, I wanted the reason. Yeah. So yeah, it answered to Tanda Kuro was Tanangora later. I know. So we always had uh, fights with Mr. Guna. You make me laugh. Um, <laughs> when when we started uh, the second episode, you, you played this beautiful piece. Mm. Uh, talk to us about this piece. Okay. Um yeah, I wanted to surprise you. It's a piece from my latest album. The wow. one I'm, I'm releasing on my birthday, it's called Runago. So wow. it's a six-track album. Thank you very much mm. for, for uh, the preview. So yeah, the first one to hear it. Wow. <laughs> there you go, guys. Another world fest. Yeah. And what, what, is, what is the piece about? What's the music about? Okay, the song talks about beauty. It's telling women that uh, beauty is not only found on your face. The way you behave, the way you talk to your husband, uh, the way your character is. Uh, in it or to unak, even young waka shot on a shot as a nak. Beauty is inside, yeah, yeah. it's inside, uh, yeah. yeah. But basically, I don't believe wrong with it's inside, but no, um, okay. Because I did not ask, I'm going to ask, I'm going to <laughs> but I uh, believe uh, beauty is not going to be uh, your character. Yeah. And, and the song goes on to say that um, but they are married. But my family is like But my kids are very beautiful. But they are married because of my characters mm. and so forth. That's the message. Be, That's the a deep song. message. Yeah, because I was meant to release it when I turned 50. Because I just thought that I've turned 50. So I think I'm now wiser. So let me address um, such issues. So I released two projects. This, I, I mean, I was meant to release two projects. Yeah. This album and a book called uh, Main Vacuum, which was my third book. Okay. So I, since, because since uh, we had a problem with COVID, uh, with the COVID I pandemic, see. I just released the book and uh, shelved the album, which I'm releasing now. Fantastic. Mm. To tell me now, let's go to your creative pro uh, process. 
how do you decide this is the piece that I want to do? This is a song that I want to do. What motivates you? Where does the inspiration come from? Is there one way of inspiration? Talk to us about your creative process. Um, there are so many different ways one gets inspiration, but on this album, I was inspired by old age. I was inspired by the fact that I'm now 50, <laughs> so I needed to say something. And on this project, um, all the previous projects, I was uh, concentrating on showing off my guitar skills. Mm. But on this project, I was concentrating on sending a message for That's amazing. since I'm 50. That's amazing. Yeah. So 50, 50 means a lot to you. Yeah. In fact, uh, when I was in my 20s, I was 100% sure that I would never reach 40. Why? Because oh, no. um, all my friends passed away before um, before year 2000. So I was confident that I'll never reach 40. Because what killed them is what we used to do together. Mm. So I was uh, thinking to myself, how can I be missed nature where she stands it my game I test it, but I was surprised with I so how do you explain the fact that you've survived this long? Ah, that's why I call myself God's favorite guitarist. <laughs> <laughs> God's favorite guitarist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. This is grace. Mm, yeah. True. When we started and we mm. were praying, as we always do, mm. you said, I'm not a Christian. <laughs> but you keep on referring to God. No. Um, a Christianity is a religion. Sure. Yeah. So I worship God outside religion because I believe God is outside religion. Mm. Um, but uh, I still believe in God. Am I right that you 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 formed your first band in 1988? Yeah, it's 17. At, at 17 years old. Mm. Talk to us about that experience and the other bands that you then got involved in. Yeah, I was taught my first lessons on a proper guitar. I think it was on the 22nd of January 1988 by a man called Last Saidi. So that same year, I formed my first band. It was called Sanungano Chanters with uh, some friends from school and uh, some friends from Fakose. That's where I used to go to school. So we did a lot of auditions, more than 10 auditions. Most of those days, you had to go for auditions. And uh, if you fail the audition, you will never record. You will never be on radio, you will never be on TV. So we failed more than 10 auditions. But I lost all the auditions and got all the lessons. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how the band uh, fell apart. And, and the, the, your, your band members walked away from you? Yeah, they felt discouraged. But I never got discouraged because before I came into the music industry, I had done a research. Okay. And um, everything that was happening, I had seen it already in the books that I had read. But uh, the music industry is not easy worldwide. Mm. Even if you read the story of Beatles, when I U2, and I don't know if I got to reject for church, no matter good levels, I just told Zingos the same way I told Zingos. So I was prepared for everything because I had read everything. So whilst everybody was busy quitting, I was busy writing down the dates, I was busy taking pictures wow. because there were no selfies that wow. time. The lesson. <laughs> we out of the picture. <laughs> So I was busy taking lessons. So and then you founded uh, Chikokoko. Yeah, Chikokoko was, was my third band. Was that in 1990? Yeah, that was my third band. It was uh, founded by me and a young man called uh, Mita Chikokoko. And we, in fact, when he f he's the one who came up with the idea and lied to us that he has found a contract in Mutare. So we're going to live in Mutare to a hotel. I was seeing myself in the Garapa side, people turned up about a glass of wine. <laughs> but when you go to Mutari, there was nothing. We didn't even have a place to sleep. So it was terrible. L lying and just, just being terrible reputation, like you say, it, it comes with this industry that you are in. Yeah, uh, eight times for you to get what you want, um, you have to. Uh, but <laughs> you wanted to get something um, out of us. Uh, I think I'm getting my dreams. I forgot to go to come to Paris. No, I'm good. I think he was not well researched like me. So I'm going to go to Canada. I'm going to go to Canada. I'm going to put it up at least. I got a man. I got a man. I got a man. In fact, my music history from the time I started up to uh, early 2000. Uh, the history was just terrible. Mm. Anybody could have quit. Yeah, but um, 
I was very determined to to keep pushing. But Why? it was terrible. Why did you not quit when everybody else was quitting and dying? Yeah, like I said before, it was not the guarantee, but the, the possibility. Promise. Yeah, the possibility of making it. and also it was something chanona soda. Because you know how it is, Guti, if you do something that you really love, you start living mm. instead of just existing. Mm. Because existing is just taking up space. But when you start doing something that you really love, you start living. Mm. Whether you marry or not. So all fulfillment. that time, yeah, that fulfillment, because there's that artistic fulfillment. So in that one, I've had it all my life. That's why I lead a very happy life. Because just myself playing guitar is a dream come true. Wow. Ngori is a guitar, so it's a dream come true. So life young is even but I struggle, it was I just knew it was history. So I was busy taking down the dates. That's why if you notice, I know all the dates. You do? Yeah, because I always I used to write my journals up to now. Mm. My life is well documented from the time I was in form two up to now, every day. So I was busy writing everything down. Wonderful. We'll take another break, uh, Mono. Mm. Um, when we come back, your wife has played a very important role in who you have become. You have uh, played and recorded with people like uh, Hope Masike, Ja Prazer, uh, Toki Vibes, uh, Transit Crew, Ivy Combo. You have uh, recorded with Mango Groove, uh, Soman Dandovu, Shingisai Salome, and we, of course, Oliver Mtukuzi. So mm. when we come back, we will try and go to those places. So please don't go away. Join us on the other side. Music in Zimbabwe, uh, being a musician in Zimbabwe carries a lot of stigma, even up to today. Greetings. My name is Trevor Nube, host of In Conversation with Trevor, Zimbabwe's most engaging conversational show. I go beyond the headlines and beyond the sensational. We've brought before your screens change makers from arts, business, and politics, and from the region. Please join our growing community of viewers. Subscribe, like, and share. conversation with Mono Mukundu. We're having an amazing time. Mono, this mm. song that you've started us with, what, which, which song is this? Um, it's called Parasite. It's from my 2012 album called Tunzio for Jin, mm -hmm. which means songs for Jin. It's a full album that I did for my wife. And well, what, what's, what's, what's the meaning behind the song, that particular song? I was just telling men, Kuti, uh, those women that come after you are successful, those women that start admiring you after you are successful, they are parasites. Mm. You should stick to the wife of your youth. Um, even the Bible says uh, you are blessed if you stick to the wife of mm. your youth. Mm. <laughs> I'm not quoting the Bible. <laughs> You're not quoting the Bible. That's, uh, that's, that's fine. So that um, was the message behind the song. And like I, was, uh, look, when I, what I said when we took a break, your wife has been very instrumental. I'm not surprised that you've actually recorded an album uh, for her. Talk to me about what your wife means to you. Yeah, we met on a Saturday, the 12th of June, 1993, and uh, we started dating. And uh, her parents were very much against the affair because I was uh, coming from the ghetto. She had visited our ghetto in Guazana. She was coming from the affluent suburbs. And um she was coming from the affluent suburbs. Then you are to my nice baby to go my deal deal. So when I approach a baby, when I win, I know that I get too many many masculines. I know my lyrics. Yeah, my lyrics. I know right. my lyrics. Everybody, I say, I'm going to fuck up. We never be better than that. I'm going to pay him can. I'm going to pay him can. And everybody was shocked. I, when I do win a baby, 
So even some of my relatives, uh, not all of them, just one or two, they even approached me and uh, told me, you know what, this is our son. They were my guitar, I wrote on the meeting school. Irombe. Irombe. They also got to come on a But um, she refused to listen. She stuck by me and she's the one who started cleaning me up. But I got to only get a mushy mushy. Kuku geza. Yeah. Even when things were started uh, going bad in the music industry, I remember the other time I was working full time as a church musician. Um, and don't uh, have a bitterness. <laughs> <laughs> we shall we shall heal this bitterness. <laughs> so I was getting problems when it comes to Nyed Zemari. So my wife is the one who said, you know what, we can survive from your guitar skills alone. You don't need to wait for anybody. Mm. So at first I was scared. It got on its own as well. It's a company. No, I've got faith in his guitar skills. We can survive with his guitar skills. This man is a great man by Nyed Zemari guitar. And uh, they would, ah, let me just follow. And uh, I've never regretted that. Um, she so was that, right after all. That's why I always tell young people that uh, marriage is a business decision. Whoever you marry is going to affect your business. Mm. Yeah. That is Jean. And you have mm. two kids with Jean. Yeah, we have two kids. Takakunda um, is the second one, born 1998. And Nyasha is the one born 1994. She's the first born. And, and Nyasha is into, into music, eh? No, Takakunda is, one. is one in music. Yeah, okay. And yeah. and doing very well? He's doing very well. He's playing for a lot of artists in praise. Um, Baba Harari, Chapres at uh, times for my recordings. And even some South African gospel artists who wow. come to Zimbabwe, like Tokozo. Mm. Like, uh, so he has Zaza. taken after you. Yeah, he's a better vision of me. You know how it is with the, the second broom sweeps better. <laughs> 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 so he's a better vision of me. Wow. Yeah. But but you you your wife has experienced health issues. Talk to me about that. Yeah, that it's one is a big yeah. one. Mm. That one is a big one. Boza year two thousand, she was diagnosed with a psychiatric problem, and uh, the problems kept coming, and the problems kept coming. Two thousand and one. About year two thousand. So she's yeah. good now. Twenty three years uh, sure. living on medication. And you know how it is when they say on the wedding day... For better, for worse. For better, for worse, in sickness and in pain. And the sickness actually is not flu. Because it is sickness. One of the other sickness... Sickness chai, 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 yeah. A type of sickness even escalated to the extent that since 2014, we've never been intimate. Hmm. Oh, no, but uh, still, I'm still standing with her because of our history. Because what we have is true love. I know the... A lot of people have failed to stand such issues, but with me, I have to stick to wow, my vows. Wow, that, that yeah. touches my heart right there. Yeah. So, uh, but how has that affected you? Has that affected you in any way? Ah, uh, it has just made me stronger, and it has made me a better um, marriage counselor. Mm. <laughs> because in most cases, like right now, I'm 50. I'm still very active. At 53, I'm still very active in the music industry. So, in most cases. Uh, in the circles that I'll be, whether I'm studio and pashok and I'll most of the time I'll be the oldest. So young people always come to me with in the problems I got marriage, in the problems I got is this a problem? Look at mine. <laughs> wow. So I think I've um, helped a lot of people mm. because of that, and it has made me very strong. It's amazing that our problems, the problems that we face as individuals, teach us a lot of lessons. And those lessons can be of benefit to other people, just like this painful thing that you're going through mm -hmm. and the lessons that you're getting and sharing those lessons with other people. Yeah, I, you, you, you end up very strong. You end up being a very a beacon of light for a lot of people. Because I remember the other time my sister calling me to her workplace. Uh, there was this guy whose wife had also been diagnosed with the same problem and he wanted to take her back to her parents. I thought, so let's be fair. You pledged that you are going to be together in sickness and pain. No sickness actually. Mm. Sickness So take care of your problems. Do people actually realize when we're exchanging those vows for sickness, for better or for worse, for sickness and uh, good health? And, and do we actually understand it? Maybe... Our pastors, I don't know, you don't believe in pastors. Our pastors, ought to, <laughs> our pastors ought to say to us, this is what it means. It means he, he might be a cripple, she might be a cripple, she might be in a wheelchair. Will you stick with him? Hey. I think what we should stop 
uh, is uh, giving people ways to speak. Repeat after me. In sickness, in pain, no, that's it already. A guy, and don't go to the Jinjaga mirror like this. You are going to fight, and a, a good marriage is a marriage with less fights, but not with zero. Mm. No, Garana Zoti, Arupinda, institution, Yakaita say. Because right now, we've got a lot of people who are to be with you forever, but forever, it is now is a timeline. On Mgango Boana. Yeah, we with conditions. Forever with mm. conditions. Yeah, with conditions, <laughs> which is a fake forever. Mm. So I think when it comes to marriage, um, one of our biggest problems is um, people are getting marriage lessons from the TV and uh, from Western media. And we all know that the Western world is the worst when it comes to marriages. I think they should learn from us. So suppose, right now I've been 28 years into marriage and this is Zulu Spark. But if I know the Western world, I'm going two, three weeks, so that's very wrong. So I think um, the divorce rates that we have right now, they are not the problem. They are the symptoms. And the main mm. problem is uh, we are getting our marriage lessons from the media, mm. which is a very wrong place because the media actually is Western media. Mm. And the Western world is the worst when it comes to marriages. Wow. Mm. The other thing that you're passionate about is teaching music. Talk to me about that. Yeah, I think music should be taught from early age because according to what scientists say, um, when children learn music, they even become brighter in school. Because mm. musicians, they use both sides of the brain. One day we use we are very good at using the emotional side and the the the, the, the logic side. I'm sure that's why we think a lot. You <laughs> will we come reason... back to church. I'm going to be praying for you to come no, back. That's to when you prove with my praise. You know, Exactly. <laughs> we are going to prove. I'm going to pray to for you. you. Yeah, absolutely. With people watching me, I'm going to pray for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, we'll see with the, you know, Pindu, you know, Pindu, you know, I'm going to ignore. Not my God. My God answers prayers. Okay, yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. So, education, music education is very good for children mm. because it opens up their brains and um, children who learn music, they become very bright in school. Mm. You've yeah. taught at the um, um, Zimbabwe College of Music, hey? Mm. Have you? Okay. Yeah. How is that experience? Ah, it was a very good experience because I, I went to the college to learn, but I remember one of my theory teachers is uh, Isaac Chirwa. Mm. And uh, he was telling me, okay, you are going to learn at the Zimbabwe College of Music, but you are going to end up teaching there even before you finish your, your certificate. It was at uh, the College of Music, I was doing a national certificate in music. But after a few months, they employed me as a part-time teacher. Wow. Then after I finished, I came back and um, started teaching full-time and then also teaching at uh, Prince Edward School. Fantastic. Yeah. You know, so we, when we were discussing this interview, I was looking forward to seeing you with uh, dreads. Um, <laughs> but you, you don't have dreads anymore. What happened? Yeah. In fact, the name Mono came from the single dreadlock that I used to have when I so was... So it was just one dreadlock? It was just one dreadlock. And that Micah Singer is the one who called me Mono, if you know what Micah Singer. Because I, I used to call it a monologue. Because in, I used to love dreadlocks, and uh, it was not allowed to have dreadlocks in school. Mm -hmm. So to compensate for that, I had one single dreadlock. That's where the name Mono came from. Mm -hmm. So after school, I had a full head of dreadlocks. But in 1994, I passed an interview to join the police band. But it never came to fruition. I announced many time police, but uh, my dreadlocks were cut already. Then after that, on Tuesday, the 20th of of June 1994, I became a Christian, and uh, that time in church, dreadlocks were a taboo. Oh, no. By the time they started allowing dreadlocks, Dandakura, my hair cannot grow as it used to, so that's why I don't have dreadlocks. <laughs> do, do you miss your dreadlock? I mean, you even if you wanted to have it, would you yeah, have it? You know, I cannot have them, but I that's my favorite. Yes, I remember. One pastor saying to me, you know, look at your son, Bozo Moronganga with my dreadlocks. Do you think this is a good thing? And I said, you are talking to the wrong person, Bozo. That's my favorite hairstyle. <laughs> um, your, your profession is misunderstood. 
I'm sure I've said things to you here which you like. He's so stereotyping me. What is it that you most hate about the way we look at your profession? Music in Zimbabwe, uh, being a musician in Zimbabwe carries a lot of stigma. Even up to today, we are so disrespected as musicians. I remember um, last time I spoke to my Manasa, the wife to the late six Manasa. Mm. She's also late. And, um, I, and I, I've got the clip on video. I, I posted it on YouTube. She was saying that uh, in Zimbabwe, you're going to give us that video so that we share it with the yeah, yeah, with sure, the I audience, will. Yeah, yeah. She was saying musicians in Zimbabwe are so disrespected, and I don't know whether we are going to be respected when we die in heaven or something. Because we are so disrespected. Can a one one tell us that we are passing on us, my musicians? If in doubt, we are not married. We imbi a a a. <laughs> Even growing up myself, um, I've grown to be very sensitive to disrespect because of that, because I love my profession. So there's a lot of stigma. And, uh, you know, when we started my guitar, I remember I said uh, my father was very much against the idea of me getting to the music industry. Because everybody was... Mm. So we get a lot of labels. Even go on a pam tambo chapo chapo. Uh with them tambo inika, with them tambo yema chechi. The way even my MC Chapo Chapo they talk to musicians, it's very disrespectful. Yeah. So I think that's one negative element about being a musician in Zimbabwe. Hmm. Mm. Is this something that you've done in your life that you regret and if you had an opportunity you would rewind and redo? I have no regrets. I just have lessons. Mm. Yeah, I don't look at my life because not struggle, not tell us anyway. But I can't. I would change mm. anything. I wouldn't no. change anything. I no. would do it again. <laughs> <laughs> What's your biggest failure? What's been your biggest failure? If Le any, listening to people who told me that I can't sing. Ha. Huh. Yeah. When you grammar records, you my days are taking up with my auditions. But on my album, I'm singing. <laughs> <laughs> But well, Mono, album, you, 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 I, I, you, you are now singing, but for a long time you've believed you couldn't sing. Yeah. Because it, people told you you couldn't sing. Yeah, you know, it's trauma. Was, uh, what you are told at a young age, uh, it That's lasts amazing. until you die. Oh, and so when we started my auditions, I was my grandma, I was going to say, I was going to say, I was going to say, they would address you in the mansion. So, 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 you know, even when you are going to say, you are going to fight, but you always go away with wounds. On. In some wounds, they don't go what, away. What's, what's the biggest wound that's been left with you because of the way you were treated? Uh, the way my father used to make fun out of me because I'm a musician. Wow. That, that is called caused me to to be very sensitive to disrespect, and uh, the general disrespect. I'm fifty. So disrespect so well, what do you think we need to do to, to, to cure that disrespect? I think as musicians, we've done a lot and we are doing a lot to clean up that name. Because if you look at people like Oliver Mtukuzi, he was well respected. I mean, I don't know if I'm respected, but you can be a musician with them, Kazi, one Kumba, a set of kids, or Kumba, it's not a child spacing around Zimbabwe. A good picture in side the music. Saka, I think panic improvement. Was at times not a bit also when it's improvement. Was I'm very bitter. Yeah. So it blinds you. Yeah, but I think improvement here is You know, you know what I find, um, Mono, is that we generally don't take time to sit down and have conversations like this. Very true. I mean, the the knowledge I have gathered reading about you and sitting down and talking to you. It's just, it just enhances my respect of the person that you are. But we have a problem of judging Mono from hearing from people that don't like him that he's like this and people that have never met him. Is, mm -hmm. is that a fair assessment? Yeah, that's a very fair assessment. Because um, 
even when you hear people talk about you pano wana mwana unotumba yaku studio kwangu kwa itara takanzodi kuno ku studio kuno tuka wano zokuti do takanzodi kuno ku studio kwa kadayo and I'm surprised to say ni sana mbutuka mwani na I just tell you the truth chiri undiluted chiri kama sika kuno ku imba wano kuza in a nice way I can tell you to go to hell and you look forward to go <laughs> you look forward to the journey because nina kuza in a nice way wana but wana wana kwa itara wana I remember the other time my wife was in a queue yam shop my wife and my daughter in ndanda kamira neche uko so vanongoro mashiro bwa tanga kuti discuss wasinga zoti mukazi wangu so ah pakati wa rozunza kwa but the good thing is zvanzwa kanaka but wainyepa so it already munhu ane mazimara singaite ane zi complex ri ma flats yake and i wish i was that rich so <laughs> <laughs> but you never say anything. I never say anything. You let them talk. Yeah, I'm that's also not because we want to but until we queue up at times we a lot about you that they might poor marriage about the quality. <laughs> you're making me laugh Le- i mean i'm not going to let you go before we discuss books mm. so um you know our, 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 our viewers all over the world love books you are an author you've written two books three so you always say there's a third one isn't yeah. it um the ones that i know are following the melody mm. and poor and famous and mm. the last one is a main vacuum main vacuum mm. um so i look forward to reading those books what books have you read mono that you would recommend to those who love books who follow the show what books I, do you me, I read? do read was uh, the only entertainment you remember i said i don't enjoy movies yes. the only entertainment that i enjoy is educational wow. so when i'm watching uh, right now we have uh, i know my smart tv here you go on youtube i just look for educational material only that's what i enjoy whether it's history world history whether it's music whether it's uh, geopolitics i just love uh, education so coming to your question the yeah. books that i've read there is uh, 48 laws of power i don't mm-hmm. know furira but i think i don't know furira so that was robert green mm-hmm. and uh, there is another one it's political but it opens up your brain kuna zvozoti politics kama games you know the prince by oh right machiavelli, machiavelli yes yeah. and then the other book that i read is um, zimbabwe township music by Joyce Jenji Makwenda. Mm. It teaches you the history of Zimbabwe music from 1930 when it was born up to now. So it's a very good book. Fantastic. Thank mm. you for sharing those books. Mono, I've thoroughly enjoyed the music mm. and uh, the, the deep conversation Thank that you. we that we've had. You know, um I, I have lots of respect for for people like you and I'm I'm hoping people you know get to listen to the depth that you have oh, and the you. authenticity uh that you have and uh begin to appreciate people like you for me, for me you are you are you are an asset uh, thank you, you very an asset much. to the country mono thank you for creating the time to join thank us you Mkoma Trevor. thank you so much mm-hmm. hey allow me to turn to our viewers who are all over the world who follow this show we are so excited we are now on 7.1 million views uh almost 50,000 uh, subscribers thank you so much for following this show thank you for supporting us remember we are out every monday 7 a.m. central african time uh on youtube to ensure that you don't miss out on any of these quality conversations please click onto this button subscribe like and share we've gone a step further and uh, put all this content on our website um and also created podcasts for your listening pleasure you go there tap on your podcast uh, and you'll be able to to listen to these conversations all the conversations that we've done here over the past three years sit on our website and on youtube thank you so much we we, we read your comments uh thank you for the for the suggestions until next time cheers to you all <music>